Welcome. Let's have a look at how to make buttons that uh, can be hovered over, uh, clicked on, and perform some sort of function. Um, now, there's quite a lot of code here in the example down the bottom, and uh, I'm not going to necessarily go uh, line by line through it, but I'm just going to point out some things that uh, might not make a lot of sense to you when you're reading through the code and uh, explain what's going on behind them. So, one thing that you won't see in the examples below on the code uh, is that I have a main uh, file here and I call three functions here init UI, update UI, and draw UI. And the reason I do that is I want to put all of the UI code in a separate file simply called UI. UI, if you don't know, stands for user interface and it generally refers to things like menus and buttons. Um, so you could equally call it buttons, for example. That would be fine. Now, here I am uh, creating each button as an object, and the advantage of that is that I can have all sorts of properties or variables here um, for each object. The obvious ones are an X and a Y position, and that will be the middle of the button, and a width and a height. Um, you can also store in the text that uh, is going to be displayed on it, and then you'll see down here when we have our draw function, um, it will simply, you'll write button.text instead of whatever text you want to draw. But something that uh, you might be really confused of here is uh, one of the properties here is called action, and you'll see that its value is actually the function that gets run uh, when the button is pressed. Now, you might not know that you can actually store a function in a variable like this, uh, but you can, and it's really, really useful. So later on, if I simply type in uh, button1.action, it will run this function, and that's really, really useful. Uh, the last thing here is we have a scale, which is just the size of it uh, compared to itself. And we use that uh, if we wanted it to get bigger while it's being clicked, for example, you can see here. So we can increase the scale temporarily. And uh, alpha refers to um, how opaque it is. That's the opposite of transparency. So transparency uh, is how see-through it is. Opacity is how not see-through it is, I guess. <laughs> so as you can see here, we're setting the alpha to not being see-through, but this will all change as we as we go along. Uh, now, the other thing that you might think is a little bit weird here is that we are putting both of these buttons uh, into a list. Uh, we don't really have to do that in this case, but we tend to do that in all of the advanced things here because it's just easier. If you make the list here, buttons equals a list, and then buttons.push simply puts pushes or puts this object into the list and we'll have two buttons in the list and then when we draw them, we can just, um, what's called iterate, which just means go over each object in the list and draw it or update it, etc. So if you come down here, uh, for example, let's uh, look at the update UI function here. Uh, you'll see this thing that says for button in buttons. Uh, now that might not make a lot of sense, but uh, buttons was the list that we had up there, right? It has two buttons in it. Um, now this word here, for button, um, you can use any word in there you like, but all that means is that will be uh, what each button is referred to while this code is running. So just to be clear, if there are two buttons in the list, this code will run for the first button and the button will be called this, and then the code will run again for the second button. And now this refers to the second button. I could have, for example, called this, you know, John or flower or something ridiculous, but in that case, all of these would have to be called the same thing. Uh, I really do suggest button though, because if you name things clearly, it becomes so much easier to uh, debug them if things go wrong. Now let's just go through this code and work out what's happening. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is check for hover, which means is the mouse uh, over the top of the button. Uh, now in the helpers function, you'll see I have this. You can import this from the usual place. If you go to explore and type in uh, games prog, games dash prog. Um, this is the file here. You can either import all of it or just the one that you want. Um, but I, I've just imported this one, which is check mouse hover. <clears throat> so if we go back to uh, the UI code here, um, first of all, uh, at the start of each frame, we're going to set the scale to one, which is just normal size. And you'll see why in a second, we're going to set it larger if and only if the mouse button is being clicked and held down. Okay, 
if check rect mouse hover. So let's go into helpers. It, we see we need an X position, a Y position, that's of the button or whatever it is, and a width and a height. So in here, we've got the button.x, button.y, button.width, button.height. And can I just reiterate again um, that this code will all be run with button referring to the first item of the list, and then it will be run again for the second item in the list, etc., etc., because it says for button in buttons. Uh, so it's going to, if check mouse hover, so that's going to return true and or one, and it's going to run if uh, the mouse is actually hovering over the button. In that case, we want the button alpha to be one. And you can see that over here, that if I hover over the button, it's uh, fully opaque. It has a, an opacity of one, not transparent at all. Um, and you can see that this if here lines up with this else, so if we're not hovering over it, then the opacity, the button dot alpha is 0 0.7. Now, just changing this alpha value in the button object obviously doesn't change the opacity at all. Um, it just is a number. And I'll show you how to actually change the opacity later on based on whatever you've saved in this uh, value here. Okay, so let's keep going. If we're hovering, then and only then we're going to check um, the mouse press. Uh, because we don't care about a mouse press that's up here or somewhere away from the button. Uh, so we check it inside once we've uh, already found out that we're hovering. So if mouse.press, then button.action, and remember these parentheses means that we're going to actually try and run it as a function because it is a function, remember? If we go up here, action equals this function. So we're going to add one to the score. <clears throat> Now, mouse.press uh, only works uh, at the moment that it is first pressed. Um, however, this is different here. If mouse.pressed, and notice it's not an else if, it's an if because both of these could be true on a frame, right? So we want both of them to run in that case. So mouse.pressed means it's being held down. And if it's being held down, we're going to set button.scale to 1.1. Again, that's not going to actually make it bigger, but it will give us the ability to make it bigger in the draw function when we go down here. Okay, so here we're going to use um, a technique where we actually change the rules for the drawing um, at the start and then change them back to normal at the end so that we don't mess up the other things that get drawn. Um, the first thing that we do is, uh, well, you notice this says for button in buttons. So all this code will run for every item in the list. Um, Screen.set draw scale. So uh, this is the X scale and the Y scale, and um, the button dot scale I've got up here is, uh, we, if we set it to 1.1, uh, that means that it's going to be stretched out 10% uh, on the X value, uh, on the X axis and on the Y axis here. And then at the end, you'll notice that we have to set it back to 1.1, 1, 1, which is normal. Same thing here, we're setting screen dot set alpha uh, button dot alpha, whatever button dot alpha is, it might be set to 0 0.7 or 1, depending on whether it's being hovered or not. And at the end, we have to set it back to uh, 1 there again. Uh, once we've done that, then this here just draws the background. It's fill rounded rect. Um, and if you click on here, you'll see uh, all of the things that you need, an X position, a Y position, a width, height, radius, color, and you can fill those in using the values of the button. And that's why we store everything uh, in these properties uh, so that it's easy to draw it. Uh, this is a general function now because we can call this uh, screen.fill rounded rect and for each button that it does, if these values are different, it will draw it differently, which is really useful for us. And the final thing then is we're going to draw the text uh, on the button there. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to see yours.